Does newer always mean more slippery? Welcome back everyone. I thought it'd be fun to dive into the aerodynamics of all Corvettes from C1 to C8. Now going into this video, I thought it was going to be a breeze to make this, do some quick research. Boom, boom, boom. This has turned out to be kind of an annoying video to make. I do have some data for you guys, but the more I got into it, the more I realized that using just a drag coefficient is not at all as simple as it sounds to determine how aerodynamic a car is, if you will. There's more things you got to consider, and that is area of drag coefficient. Then you have downforce, lift, weight, how fast the car is going during the test, is it static? It became very convoluted very quickly. If anything simple, I'm just gonna go off the inauguration year of every Corvette C1 to C8 in its base model form. Assuming we're doing this in a wind tunnel, static display, and this is simply a measure of which generation it's overall slipperiness is if you will not adding downforce later trims such as zero ones zero sixes etc but yeah it's gonna be every generation in their base form that very basic design how slippery it is compared to other generations because if not this could get a very convoluted and this is turning into a two hour long video so i'm only going to be looking at drag coefficient for the base model for its inauguration year for that generation Oh, that was really clunky and a huge ugly word salad, but I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Obviously, there's eight generations to choose from. Start with the least slippery, if you will, Corvette to the most slippery Corvette. And some of these kind of surprised me, and I think you'll find it very interesting. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so probably no surprise, the C1 Corvette, as far as I could tell, has the worst efficiency of drag of all the Corvettes. This is the only one I had to get a ballpark figure. Unfortunately, back in the 50s, they didn't really have these kinds of tests. If they did, they measured them much differently. Technology today is so much more advanced as trying to figure out coefficient of drag, etc. The best guess is about 0.55 coefficient of drag on the C1 Corvette. And you will see how that compares to the rest as we go. And I'll include a formula here too for the coefficient of drag if you're not familiar. And interestingly enough though, uh, the C1 Corvette being the smallest of all the Corvettes has the largest area up front. But the rear end does slope kind of bit and it's not a terrible drag coefficient, but it's not great by any means, by today's standards if you will. What I'm saying is that it has the largest area of drag coefficient of all the ones tested. But that's not really something we're gonna look at, not to confuse anyone. All right, number seven. That would be the C2 Corvette. Now this one might look the sleekest of all the Corvettes made, but it's not. It's not that slippery through the air, unfortunately. This has a coefficient of drag of about 0.49. That number's pretty accurate from a few sources I got on different forms. This car was, was also kind of hard to get a good number on, but this is a very close number from what I can tell. In case you're wondering, this car was able to reduce drag and rear lift quite a bit from the C1 platform, which I did a pretty good job of. However, this car does become unstable of speeds over about 140. Zora himself, the grandfather of Corvettes, stated that this is kind of like a bad airplane. Kind of wants to take off, if you will not fly, but it's kind of fly on the ground, not very stable above 140. So if you own a C2, it can give it more of a cruiser than a um, all out speeder. All right, number six, and this is the C3. The C3 was kind of the most dynamic to get a good reading on because this car has such a long run and they changed the front ends and the rear ends quite a bit. Its drag number changed quite a bit, but again, we're gonna focus on its inauguration year. The C3 is sporting a coefficient of drag of 0.44, and this had a huge disadvantage with, with its pop-up headlights of all the ones in this. It added something like another 0.5, almost as bad as a C1 when the headlights are up, so not a great design. It looks very sleek, and it did improve by the late 70s and the early 80s. It did get a little better, but for uniformity, I'm going off its inaugural year, so there you go. All right, number five, that would be the C4 Corvette. Now, by this time, tunnel testing was, was becoming kind of mainstream for any kind of sports car, and they started taking the Corvette very seriously uh, amongst its 
European rivals, if you will, and they were able to reduce the Kofi Annan drag by about 0.10, which is quite a big step from the C3 to the C4. So the C4 is coming in right at 0.34 coefficient of drag. And they did a lot of testing and they, they moved the steering rack itself really forward on the C4 so they could get the engine much lower back. And that greatly helped uh, with the design, getting that roof line a little lower. Uh, the C4 does have a lot large area, if you will, but its overall design is very slippery. Uh, compared to its um, predecessors. And again, like the C2 and C3, when the headlights were up, it did affect the amount of drag quite a bit, but I'm just, I'm just assuming all these cars have the headlights down for comparison purposes. All right, number five. This one might surprise you, it kind of surprised me, and that would be the brand new C8 Corvette Stingray with a coefficient of drag of 0.32. It is still a very slippery car, uh, but it does borrow a lot of cues from the Ferrari 488 if you can't tell. Now in mid-engine design, you're kind of reduced to only so many different design choices you can make, obviously. And I suspect as the trims get more aggressive, the drag is gonna get greater, but your, your downforce is gonna increase. So it's, it's kind of a give and take. But yeah, that kind of surprised me that the uh, C8's not as slippery as uh, some of its younger siblings interesting number six the c7 corvette coming in at 0 0.30 coefficient of drag this car by no means is a brick through the air taj himself the leading chief engineer was quoted at, was saying something along these lines of pretty much um you get such an aggressive design out of the box even if it's very slippery you have all these little aero bits and it's going to add up as you get more wider tires it's also going to add to your drag and the more aerodynamic aids you add such as the little scoops for the rear over the back, you know, the fenders, up front, the hood scoop, etc. You name it, even though it's helping your, your aerodynamic downforce, it's really hurting your drag. So, like I said before, it's kind of kind of a give and take. And he goes on to say they kind of like how an engine makes more power, it needs more cooling systems to dissipate all of that heat. And it's kind of the same uh, with aerodynamics. As the car makes less drag, it's gonna go quicker, but it needs more downforce to control that more fluid motion. Hope that makes sense. I really dig up that quote, but something to that effect. Number seven, the C6 Corvette. And this comes in at 0.29 coefficient of drag. Now, I found so many conflicting articles, forums, bulletins compared to the C5, which one was actually the more slippery Corvette. It kind of, it's a toss up. I'm biased to C5s, but they're very close, very, very close. The C5 does have more of a frontal area. So if you calculate uh, drag coefficiency with area, the C6 is gonna win. Overall, most slipperiness, the C5 does seem to be a little more slippery. Now, however, in its static state, both C4 and C5, the C5 ekes out just a little bit, but you put the headlights up in the C5 and the C6 is gonna destroy it. So there's that. So it depends what kind of driving you're doing. But if you take a C5 and you put static headlights on it, it's really gonna help your aerodynamics, especially at night. All right, number eight, C5 Corvette. Like you see behind me, the C5 base model comes in with a coefficient drag of 0.29, where uh, the C6 was like a 0.297, this was like a 0.296. So damn close. However, in the Z06 form, it's actually worse drag because of the notch back. The hatchback really helps it slip through the air. This little notch back here, not so much. And the Z06 or F FRC has a drag coefficient of 0.31. So yeah, in this form, you're gonna get a little worse gas mileage. You're gonna max out top end on FRC before you go on a coupe. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, I've seen some testing too floating around where if you take a C6 01 with the same power as a C5 base model, the top end, the C5 can go to about 230, which is nuts. A ZR1 will max out at about 206, 207, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I misread that comparison, but I thought that was fascinating while doing the research for this. So there you go, guys. Newer does not always mean more slippery, but you also have to understand that with more power and less drag, they have to compensate by more downforce. You add downforce you're gonna lose your slipperiness. So 
there you have it. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, I'm not a aerodynamic, hydrodynamic engineer by any means. I do work in aviation, but not on that side of the house. So I hope it didn't sound too stupid and hopefully you learned something today. I thought it was kind of neat that the C5 Corvette is marginally the sleekest Corvette made so far. So yeah, there it is. Anyways, yeah, go enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you guys next time. Mark out.